Warner Bros. Discovery's CCO has made positive comments about All Elite Wrestling, suggesting there may be an increased AEW television deal coming in the future. Andrade and Sammy Guevara, what's the latest with their situation? Well, Sammy Guevara has commented whilst not commenting on the situation. Rip Flair's also had his two cents on the situation too. We've got an update on Jeff Hardy's current legal situation. Plus, Eric Rowan, was he close to signing with All Elite Wrestling? Soraya also has her comments about <laughs> a certain Mr. Cornette. And finally, we're also going to talk about Ethan Page becoming an AEW agent. Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of All Elite Wrestling. Of course, it's Wednesday. You know what that means. That means it's another episode of AEW Dynamite on TBS. Of course, tonight is AEW's debut in another country, that country being Canada. They're in Toronto, Ontario, Canada for the Wednesday Night Dynamite special Ring of Honor World Championship match on the line, plus other surprises being teased. So it's going to be a big day for All Elite Wrestling. But let's start off talking about AEW's future. Of course, everyone's discussing Discussing and commenting about what's going to happen when it comes to when it's time to negotiate or renegotiate their television contract with Warner Bros. Discovery. Of course, when they previously got their new television deal back in January of 2020, it was just Warner Bros. at the time. But since then, they've merged companies with Discovery. Warner Bros. Discovery is the thing, and people are discussing. What's going to happen? What's Warner Bros. Discovery's position going to be on All Elite Wrestling? Now, reports about Warner Bros. Discovery's happiness with All Elite Wrestling's brand continue to trickle out. And the latest one comes from an official source. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter on the current state of TBS and TNT, WBD Chief Content Officer Kathleen Finch touted the success of AEW's ratings and hinted that more non-wrestling AEW content might indeed be on the way. She said, quote, one of the things that we're doing around sports is creating shoulder programming to hold on to those fans, uh, Finch said. AEW pulls huge numbers, so we are working with the wrestling team to figure out what new kind of content we can build that's not in a wrestling ring. Now, those comments, of course, line up with prior reports that, no, uh, that more non-wrestling content is on the way from the company. Now, back in August, AEW filed a trademark for a television series titled All Elite Woman. While nothing has materialized as of yet, it seems very likely that the series is on the way soon, perhaps in the form of reality show to replace the company's previous reality series, Roads to the Top. It remains to be seen whether WBD is intent on picking up a Ring of Honor series since purchasing the company earlier this year. AEW CEO Tony Khan has integrated Ring of Honor into AEW programming, most notably by putting the Ring of Honor World Championship on Chris Jericho, which he will defend tonight live on Dynamite. Still though, an actual television deal for the company has yet to come to fruition. Whatever the case may be for Ring of Honor, there's no de there's no denying, easy for me to say, that WBD is happy with AEW's performance in recent weeks. The company even opted to extend last week's AEW Dynamite with an extra 15-minute overrun. Now, this is definitely positive for AEW, certainly. And I think with all of the noises that we're hearing, it would be really, 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 really surprising if AEW and Warner Bros. Discovery couldn't come to terms on a television deal that, at the very least, has the existing terms in place. And, and I and I think that would be not disastrous, because they'd still be on television, they still have the budget AEW, but I think they'd be really disappointed if that's the case. AEW is in a really strong position when it comes to their negotiations for their television deal. Now, their television deal uh, negotiations, I believe, are going to be happening... Well, the discussions about them certainly will be, will begin, or the sort of the talking points about them will be fairly soon, won't they? And with all of this discussion about the chaos and the uncertainty and the inmates running the asylum going on in AEW and all of these backstage fights, the arguments, the public ones, the not so public ones, the CM Punk Kenny Omega uh, Young Buck situation. Obviously, the situation with Andrade and Sammy Guevara, and and, and Sammy Guevara and Eddie Kingston, and what whatever, whatever you may, whatever you may have. It has been widely reported, and this is now someone senior within Warner Bros. Discovery saying publicly on the record that they're happy with AEW. And it had been widely reported that in the last sort of five or six weeks, certainly coming out of All Out, Warner Bros. Discovery was very happy with the performance of AEW Dynamite on TBS. They'd basically done a million viewers every single week if it wasn't for Hurricane Ian. That Wednesday, the coverage of Hurricane Ian, which dominated uh, the cable networks during that night, they would have done over a million viewers every single week since All Out. And 
I don't suspect that to be any different tonight. I would expect that they would do a million viewers, probably just over. Now, they're way off doing your 1.5 million viewers like you know that's and that's a very bad monday night raw and they're they're even way off i think doing a a 1.3 or anything like that their audience base at the moment is just over that 1 million viewer mark it's just over that it's your 1.1 or your 1.35 or something like that and if it dips a little bit under it's 990 or it's 900 it's around that ballpark that's the AEW Dynamite audience and I think they'll be very happy with that because by all accounts those are better numbers than T- TNT or TBS were doing in that time slot prior to all Elite wrestling being in existence so they'll be very happy with that and are there other aspects of the television deal they can improve upon i.e is there a way that they can improve the ratings of rampage is there a way they can improve the ratings of television specials such as battle of the bouts yes time slot has to be more favorable i think rampage the ratings might be somewhat different somewhat different if if it was eight to ten live on a friday as opposed to one hour pre-tape 10 to 11 or even if it's not even if it's live 10 to 11 live on a friday still is difficult the numbers are still going to be what they are and i do think that tony khan most likely would probably book the show rampage drastically differently if um if it was 8 to 10 live on a Friday, he could space things out a little bit better. As far as Ring of Honor goes, will Ring of Honor be a part of those television negotiations? I would have thought they would have been on the table, certainly. And if Warner Bros. Discovery are saying to AEW, we want more content from you, we want more programming from you, then surely Tony Khan would be within his rights to say, I want you to pick up a Ring of Honor series. And if they said, well, we've got enough live wrestling, you know, you've got Rampage on a Friday, it would be within Tony Khan's you know, the right mindset, I think, for him to say, okay, we'll take Rampage off the air then and we'll make Ring of Honor that two-hour show on a Friday. I think that's the way to do it. As I've mentioned, I've said this a million times here on the channel, I think the resolution to a lot of AEW's issues when it comes to talent at the moment, not being used, not being booked or growing frustrated, etc., is that Ring of Honor brand. That's the key. If you can separate them and have AEW as one entity and Ring of Honor as another entity and split that roster in half and book those shows differently, I do believe that is the answer. But for Ring of Honor to succeed in that sense, need a television deal. So whether or not Tony Khan can get that done, I don't know. But it would appear certainly that AEW's hand is very strong right now now is it as strong as it was a bit as it would have been like a year ago with the success coming out of last year's all out with brian danielson cm punk adam cole and the, the time they were doing 1.2 million viewers that so there was a, a feeling that they were never going to catch wwe but there was a feeling of i tell you what a lot of people watch this and this is this is positive that positivity that hotness that aw had a year ago isn't there but still Wednesday nights, most times, it's either the number one show on cable or very close to being so, number two, number three. And Warner Media will be very happy with that. So I don't expect there to be any issues, frankly, when it comes to uh, AEW's future with Warner Bros. Discovery. And I expect more shows to come. Those reality shows, All Elite Woman, the, I think was it Darby Allen was having a reality show filmed with him. I expect more of that. And... Um, and I think AEW, as long as they're getting paid, they'll be happy to facilitate it. Let's talk about Andrade Sammy Guevara. Of course, this time last week, <laughs> people were wondering what was going to happen with Andrade and Sammy Guevara. And uh, in well, this time last week, just a few hours later, they were brawling. Or certainly Andrade was trying to fight Sammy Guevara backstage at Dynamite. Now, of course, the latest backstage incident in AEW took place last Wednesday with an alleged altercation between Sammy Guevara and Andrade Al Idolo taking place. The incident stemmed from an interview that Andrade did where he mentioned previously having issues with Guevara, which Sammy took offense to, with the two men getting aggressive on social media. Now, the altercation at Dynamite led to Andrade being sent home and his planned mask versus AEW career match with Preston 10 Vance of the Dark Order for last week's Rampage being cancelled. Dave Meltzer followed up on reports noting that he believes Andrade is trying to get fired so he can return to WWE and AEW president Tony Khan has made it clear that the altercation would not lead to Andrade being future endeavoured from the company. 
Now, in an update on this story, in the latest episode of his vlog, Sammy Guevara addressed the situation, noting he is trying not to focus on any of the bullshit and he's just looking to look forward to what is to come. He said, quote, I know some people want me to comment on what exactly happened backstage at AEW Dynamite, but man, I'm done focusing on the negativity. I feel like when you're on this trajectory to where I'm headed, there's going to be people who do everything in their power to try and drag you down to their level. I know I'm above that, so I'm not going to focus on any of the bullshit. I'm going to focus on where I'm headed, which is, and he points to the sky. They say sky's the limit, but there's a whole universe out there, and that's where I'm headed, man. I'm not going to focus. I'm not going to comment on any of the bullshit. I want to do this thing that Tay and I do anytime we're too negative or focusing on too much shit that's not really important in life. We say to each other, what are the five things you're grateful for? I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful for my life. I'm grateful for Tay. I'm grateful for the job I have, and I'm grateful for you guys. Thank you to the people who support me and the people who don't believe everything they read on. Online, I just want to say thank you. Now, of course, Guevara was not sent home from last week's show, remaining in the main events where he and Chris Jericho defeated Brian Danielson and Sammy Guevara. Now, this is funny because <laughs> what did Sammy Guevara say? Was it on his last vlog? I think it was on his last vlog. There's way too much drama in wrestling. Oh, there's just so much drama in wrestling. There's a lot of drama surrounding you, I think is the actual answer to that. In addition to that, I believe on his prior vlog, he was implying that this is this is the end or, you know, goodbye, blah, 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 trying to imply that, I don't know, the vlog was ending or he's leaving AW. That seems like drama. <laughs> that seems quite dramatic, does it not? So I don't know. I mean, he can say I'm not gonna I'm focus I'm not gonna focus on any of the BS, but he was focusing on it a lot when he was making those Twitter comments to Andrade as well. And I totally understand Andrade did start it because we're in the third grade here. Andrade did start it by saying the thing in the interview. You could argue Sammy started it by maybe allegedly saying those things backstage. Either way, it's embarrassing. Either way, I'd have just done the vlog and not talked about it because you've spoken enough about it in a public forum, in my opinion. Now, Ric Flair, being Ric Flair, also threw his two cents into the situation. Of course, Andrade is Ric Flair's son-in-law, being married to Charlotte Flair. And just listen to the comments that Ric Flair made. He said, quote, I've only met Guevara one time or twice. He was very nice to me. But you don't want to be rocking and rolling with Manny. Manny is Andrade. I've been to Manny's home. I know how he grew up. You know Sin Cara? Manny is Sin Cara. Now, I hate to break it to Ric Flair, but Andrade, Manny, is not Sin Cara. <laughs> Even, unless I am mistaken, Manny, Andrade, is not Sin Cara. There are two people that were Sin Cara. There was one, which was the Mystico, which came from Mexico, from CML, CMLL. He was one of, if not the first Triple H signing, when Triple H got into a talent relations role in WWE back in 2011, I believe the time was. That was not Andrade. Then he was replaced by Hunico, which again, was not <laughs> was not Andrade. So unless Ric Flair is mistaken, I, 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 I do not think so. That is that is not the case. That is not the case. Sin Cara is Mystico, who used to be Caristico, but then the mask was given to Dragon Lee, who is now Drillistico, whose brother became Dragon Lee, who became Ryu Lee, and before he was uh, Mestiz, and then there's Mestiz Jr., then there's Hunico, who used to be Mystico, but again, it's not Andrade. So I don't know. <laughs> what Ric Flair is talking about there. But that's just Ric Flair. He talks a load of nonsense a lot of the time. Jeff Hardy. Let's talk a little bit about Jeff Hardy. We've got an update on Jeff Hardy's status. And there is a positive update that has been provided on suspended AEW star Jeff Hardy's progress. Of course, back in June, Jeff Hardy was pulled over and arrested in Volusia County, Florida, on multiple DUI charges. Now, the AEW star is set to appear at a pre-trial hearing on October 19th. Following the arrest, Hardy was suspended from All Elite Wrestling without pay and entered a rehabilitation program in an effort to address his clearly uh, substance abuse issues. Now, during an appearance on the Busted Open radio network on Sirius XM, Matt Hardy addressed his brother's health and explained all he wants is for Jeff to be healthy. Hardy said, quote, I just want him to get better. Even if Jeff never wrestles another day in his life, I want him to be healthy. And it's important for him to be healthy and happy because he has two beautiful daughters. He has a very long, uh, very loving wife who has stuck by his side through thick and thin. And the most important thing I want for my brother is for him to be healthy. 
Now, when asked how Jeff is doing, Matt answered, quote, he seems to be doing really well. The conversations I've had with him have been really, really good. And most important, uh, the most important barometer, I think, of all of these things is that his wife, Beth, is super happy with his progress and where he's at in life. And I think that's probably most important. Now, as recently reported, Jeff Hardy is not expected back in all, or in all Elite Wrestling until his legal issues are resolved and he has proven he can maintain his sobriety. So, I mean, look, I totally agree with what Matt Hardy is saying there. The most important thing is that Jeff Hardy is healthy and, and happy and gets his substance abuse issues resolved that have plagued him for, gosh, the better part of... I mean, there were issues with Jeff Hardy maintaining his sobriety all the way back in 2002, 2003. So the better part of 20 plus years. So here's hoping he can get them resolved once and for all. And if that means he never steps back in a wrestling ring again, that's what it means. Uh, because wrestling, once you start getting into this territory about addiction and about family and about health, it's just not important once you start getting into that, that realm. So here's hoping he can get it fixed. You know, with Hardy, Matt saying that Jeff is appearing to be healthier and appears clear and appears good, I would also say that we've heard that a lot before. And the key thing is, and hopefully AEW maintains this rule that they've set with Jeff, that he can only return once he has maintained that sobriety for an undisclosed period of time. And I would hope it's a really long period of time. I would hope it's a significant amount of time because, again, um, it, it, this Jeff Hardy has had so many final chances or last shots, as it were, if you pardon the pun. And uh, this really is it if he should ever be back inside of a wrestling ring again, in my opinion. So the most important thing is that he gets um, his issues uh, under control. Let's talk about Eric Rowan, Eric Redbeard. Now, we've said a couple of appearances, of course, by Eric Rowan in AEW, but uh, Eric Redbeard, formerly known as Eric Rowan in WWE, has said that signing with AEW was never a conversation. He made his AEW debut on the unforgettable Brody Lee Celebration of Life episode of AEW Dynamite from December 2020. Redbeard then made his return to the company ahead of Revolution earlier this year and aligned with Pac and Penta El Zero Miedo of Death Triangle in a trios match against the House of Black at the pay-per-view. A former WWE star would later return again to team up with Dan Housen in a loss to Austin and Colton Gunn on the August 12 edition of AEW Rampage. But speaking with Steve Fall of NBC Sports Boston, the former Eric Rowan was asked whether the signing with AEW was ever talked about. He said, quote, it was never a conversation. I was doing and pursuing my own things. It was just never a thing. And I didn't at that time, especially... I didn't want to be the guy that distract and always made you remind you remind people of a loss, especially that quickly. With the Dark Order, I wanted nothing to do with it. That's nothing to say um, that I'm better. No, what I'm saying is I didn't want anything to do with it because that's his legacy. If it's going to fizzle out, I want it to fizzle out. Now, he continued to state that he wanted to leave the memory of Brody Lee on its own rather than potentially affecting it by working with the company. He said, quote, but he made and created that in such a quick amount of time that he had left that I want that to be the memory of him, his TNT championship, his dog collar matches. I want that all to be held up there. And I wanted nothing to do with that. So even if there was a conversation, I wouldn't have seen myself having a spot there. So him essentially saying, look, and I can under I can understand his point of view when it comes to that. Honestly, I can. With him basically saying, "Look, I don't I don't want to come in and be a part of the Dark Order. That's Brody Lee saying, and I don't want to come in because of obviously with his history of Brody Lee. I don't I don't want to remind people of that, and uh, and I don't want to tarnish Brody Lee's, Lee's legacy involving that. Not that he would, because I don't think he would. And the Dark Order has evolved and moved on, clearly, after the loss, the, the tragic loss of, of Brody Lee. But I can understand his point of view. And I think, frankly, at this point, I expect to see him back in WWE uh, over AW. I, I really do. With the way that WWE is signing people, it feels kind of inevitable, doesn't it? Uh, Soraya, Soraya, however you want to say it. It's Soraya, isn't it? Yeah, I, I'm still struggling to pronounce that one. <laughs> anyway, she's taken to Twitter and has said, quote, Dirt Sheets, podcasters, an old man, uh, and an old man, rather, that loves to have his voice heard, even if it's full of shit, brackets, cornet, loves to talk about me. You're welcome for the clicks and views. Obviously hitting back at some of the social media discussion regarding her. I said this before, and um, I think there's been a lot, obviously, look, a lot of scrutiny surrounding her recently since she made her AW debut with her debut promo not being good, and it wasn't good. 
Uh, her comment that she made about her former boss or uh, now having a boss that listens to her again was I just I didn't get it. I didn't I, I didn't understand why she felt the need to do it. Maybe it was just a case that for the promo wasn't going around. She thought I've got to do that. The, where I do sort of draw the line is again those people on social media or wherever that are saying I can't believe AEW cleared her. I can't believe they cleared her. Well. We don't know her medical condition. We know she was forced to retire. But if you listen to her on her Twitch stream, she said, well, I never even spoke to anyone about being cleared. I never went to their doctors. I never went through the system, as it were, to see if I could come back because I never broached the conversation. They never broached with me, so I never broached with them. Clearly, she has of AW and she's been cleared. So we're not doctors. I'm not a doctor. I, I can't say that's a good or a bad thing. Of course you have concerns. Oh, oh my goodness. Clearly you have concerns. Uh, but I had concerns about Edge coming back. I had concerns about Sting coming back. I had concerns about Brian Danielson coming back. And they've all thrived after being cleared. You know, med medical science evolves and changes. So um, my biggest thing when it comes to... Um, Soraya in AEW is that it's great having her, but the presentation of female wrestling still has to change. You know, the the want to have females main eventing TV shows and main eventing pay per views and having multiple female matches per show that has to change. You can get all the stars in there that you want, but if you're still having five minute multi people matches on Dynamite, it really means nothing, especially if there's one per week. And, and that's the way that I still feel on it. Uh, but there you go, guys. That's the latest uh, AEW news for you to, for for you today. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner. Let me know your thoughts on today's AEW news stories in the comment section below, and I'll speak for you again very very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.